Crossing. Viper status on tunnel over. Viper tunnel clear. We can see the courtyard. Courtyard, Hawk. Yeah, leader, this is Hawk. We're advancing through uh, structure two and three. Surveillance Eagle. Uh, we're on our way. This is Eagle. Yeah, this is Hawk making the turn. All clear. Cobra status. Got no visual here. Uh, we have no activity on the north floor. Eagle status. Uh, this is Eagle. We're just getting up there, Leo. Two confirmed kills, two mortally wounded, two superficials. Three kills. You fucked up. You didn't check the environment. You want to be on a team? You want to be out there for real? You want to get the bad guys? You got to get through me first. And this just ain't going to get it. Tomorrow morning, 0900. Same drill, full dress. Get out of here. I don't need this. I'm not a rookie. I got a life. Not anymore. Oh, you're funny. You're very funny. Well, I suggest you show up tomorrow. Okay. Nice paint job, fellas. Hey, John, we're having lunch at my place. You want to join us? Yeah, OK, thanks. Oh, or uh, maybe not. I guess I have more work to do here. I'll see you at home tonight. Maybe. Ooh, my big, bad brother. I am not one of your rookies, OK? <sighs> Hi. Mr. Lomax. Hi, I'm Liz Pierce with Hardlow. Hi. Look, I tried to get my camera crew into your training session today, and we were turned away by someone. Yeah, well, it's not open to the public. Yes, I know that, but I was promised full cooperation by your department's public relations officer. Well, that's going to be a problem, I guess, isn't it? What is? People making promises they can't deliver. Um, I overheard your students talking today, and I know you're going back out on a training exercise tomorrow in full battle gear. That's exactly the kind of footage I want. So you can show our tactics to the bad guys on Menia. We're not all bad guys. Right. Uh, listen, why don't you let me buy you a drink? 
and we'll just talk about it. Well, how about if I buy you dinner later and we don't? <laughs> you know, Jenny, I'd really like to spend more time with you. Look, I asked you not to bring that up again. I am just not ready to date anybody right now. Oh, oh so now I'm just anybody. Look, I can't do this right now. I've got work to do. We can talk about this later. I dream of growing up to be the next Woodward and Bernstein, and how do I end up? Geraldo in a skirt. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I've actually seen Geraldo in a skirt, and it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I, I do like your show every now and then. You get to bag one of the bad guys. Yeah, it's true, we do. You know, they um, nailed a murderer the other day, thanks in part to us. Hey, do you know what time it is? Ten to seven. Why, do you have to be somewhere? <laughs> no. I just realized that about 10 minutes your show starts while you're here with me. Well, we do tape in advance, you know. Ah. So how did you become a cop? Oh, I'm not a cop. A civilian employee of the government. A tactical defense and a CQB instructor. That's close quarter battle. So why would someone with your training choose to sit on the sidelines? I've been out in the field before. I just don't want to look for trouble anymore. I bet you'll get away, you did. Well, I made it this far. Have you ever been in here? No. You gotta see this. Come on. Is she your type? <laughs> I do like a hard body, but I think she's a bit much. <laughs> Actually, I uh, like to come here for the solitude. <laughs> what? I don't know. You're just not what I expected. Oh. We're not alone here. Breaking it. No, no, no. I know what I'm doing. Excuse me. <laughs> Can I help in any way? No, thanks, man. I got it under control. Yeah, would you look at it, please? Sure. Boy, oh, you must have some class tomorrow. No, this is for Judge Reynolds. Judge Reynolds? Wow, that's, that's very impressive. Hey, name's Martin Merman. Jenny. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's see. What's a pretty girl like you carrying around a big load of books like that by herself? Well, some of us grown-ups have got a lot to do. Okay, I said the forbidden word girl. I meant woman. <laughs> it's okay. I tell you, this politically correct business is wreaking havoc on the dating game. Yeah. Martin, how long do you think this is gonna be? I'm done. Oh, great. Anything else I could do for you? Yeah. Would you make this one last copy for me so I can go get another book? Consider it done. Thank you. Hard Look, we told you the story of Bill Loomis, on the run for almost a year after the brutal murder of his wife, Brenda. This week, we are pleased to announce the capture of Loomis, 
who was recognized by a co-worker in the Memphis warehouse where he was employed. The district attorney says he will soon announce the Castro Lewis. He will seek the death penalty in the pending... Hi. Hi. Remember me, Martin, from the library? Yeah. How are you? Good. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to bother you at home, but, you know, you, you forgot your wallet at the library. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't even know that I left it there. Thank you so much for bringing this by. No problem. I really appreciate it. Listen, it, it's kind of embarrassing, but can I use your restroom? Oh. Well, I've got a lot of company right now, and I really need to get back to them, but thank you for the wallet. It, it just take a second. No, I'm sorry, but thank you very much for the wallet. It's okay. No problem. Okay, well, I'll see you later. See you later? Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 so I could get to know you a little better. Get out. Get the hell out! No, wait, wait. You, give me a chance. We, we, we could... <laughs> oh. of his priors and put them on my desk by this afternoon, okay? Okay. So, how's it going here? We've got a ton of physical evidence, a good circumstantial case. All we need now is a positive ID witness that puts him on the scene of the crime. The DA really wants to fry his ass on this one. Are sure you ready for this?
Number two. Number three. Turn to the right. Turn to the left. Is that him, Mr. Lomax? Is he the one? second time. All right, now I want all them tables right in this area. Excuse me, Warden Muncy. Has there been any word from the governor? No. No, and I don't believe there will be. You know, there's absolutely no reason why Bobby Lee Hazen should not be put to death. I guess we agree to disagree. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. You know, I admire you. Uh, following in your daddy's footsteps like that. Here, sit down. That tough man. Well, he's the toughest warden I ever served under. You could do well to follow his example. My father treated his prisoners like animals. No matter what these men have done, they're still men. Human beings, and they deserve their dignity. Well, they deserve something. But dignity ain't it. Well, Christmas candy? I guess there's a congratulations due. Warden Muncy, the governor's appointment came as much a surprise to me as it did to you. Well, as my assistant. My understanding is that we will have a shared responsibility. Listen, my title is warden, yours is assistant warden. Now, do we understand the chain of command? Hmm? Yes, sir, we do. I just want to help you. Help you to adjust to your new position. Of course, we all have a dark place. And I don't like to visit mine, but I will if I have to. Understood? Understood, Warden. By the first week in January, our entire population will be relocated to Fairview Security Center. That's no prison. That's summer camp. I understand you've invited the press to Bobby Lee's execution. Yeah. Well, that's standard. Gonna meet with the governor at the parole board Friday afternoon. Now, why in God's name will you do that? I consider Bobby Lee Hazen's execution to be cruel and unusual punishment. He was only 17 when the entire incident happened. But the state saw fit to try him as an adult. Now, who am I to contradict their wisdom, huh? I want to warn you that the press may not be favorably inclined toward your position. But the people of the state are. You know, you may be good at the politics game, but I am not out of step with the public mood. Perhaps. But the governor may well commute Bobby Lee's sentence to life. Well, Assistant Warden Barnes, tell the governor if he's fit to do that little thing. And I'll be saving you a place at the execution. Right in front, almost the best seat in the house. that refugee from the ACL, you'd be Fred Barnes' daughter. You know, Ed, I never understood what made him do it. What's that, Warden? A strong man like that? Suicide? Of course, they say the bureaucrats forced him out. The kitchen staff all ready for our guests? Set and ready. 
I'll show them all how to make a goddamn media statement. All right, so listen, give me the deal, Dan. What's the rundown? Look, John, I wish I could tell you that Kagan's gonna go to the chair, no question. But that just isn't the way it works. Even killers like Kagan get a chance to appeal. Take this hearing right now. This is a clemency hearing for Bobby Lee Hazen. The victim's family members like you get a chance to say their piece, and so does the family of the convicted. But in the case of Bobby Lee Hazen, his victim's family moved out of state, so that leaves the arresting officer to plead the case. Me. You know, this Barnes woman's incredible. She's not just trying to get clemency for Kagan, but she's trying to get everybody off. Exactly. And that's why I wanted you here today, to be ready when Kagan's case comes up. Oh, but let me tell you about the Hazen clan. Ooh. The whole fam damnly are refugees from the film Deliverance. The father, Luke, keeps a tight rein on his kids. They do anything for dear old daddy. The older brother, Buck, we had him dead bang on rape till the victim turned up in a ditch with her throat cut. Of course, Luke probably did that. There could have been any of them. Even sweet little Betty Sue. The only Hazen that did any hard time was Richie. We got him for a year on assault. You could get a goddamn hernia lifting up his rap sheet. Hold on. Say again. How you doing, Betty? We're going to the parole board meeting. Uh, they're already in session. We'll go right on in. Now, Bobby Lee, he shot a store owner in cold blood and was sentenced to death three years ago. This is his last appeal before they fry his ass. He's had some court-appointed lawyer working his appeals. But the funny thing is, we haven't heard a word from his family since he was sentenced. The board just makes a recommendation. Only the governor can commit a sentence of death. There are extenuating circumstances surrounding this case, Governor. This is a boy raised in the worst possible environment trained to lie, to steal, even to kill. And there's a lot of talk in this country about family values. But what happens to a child when his family's values are twisted? Bobby Lee's family didn't give him a break. Will the system let him down too? Dr. Barnes, you're suggesting we give Bobby Lee Hazen a break. What sort of break did he give Sam Myers? A husband, a father, a small business owner, I'll tell you what kind of break he gave him. He blew off Sam Myers' head with a blast from a sawed-off shotgun. Are you listening to me? I'm a replacement, honey. Uh, oh, you got it. Officer Mason, we always appreciate hearing comments from the arresting officer, and we thank you. Now, is there anyone from the victim's family coming to speak with us? Is there anyone from Mr. Hazel's family coming to be here? But ain't too late to put in a good word for a kin, Gov. All right, it's gonna be okay. Listen, shut your trap, boy. We're making the rules now. Buck, check him out. Get the wall! He's some kind of fed. Kill him. Shut up, Richie. Get out there and check that hallway. I think you're gonna be a big help to us. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get on that phone and you're gonna convince somebody that we're dangerous men. And it'd be in everybody's best interest to get Bobby Lee down here just as soon as possible. Wow. Look here. You're not gonna help Bobby Lee this way. Honey, it'd be a big help if you'd set your sweet ass back down in that chair. <laughs>
shed at the top of the stairs. I'll do the wraparound later. Sam, if you need anything else, call me at home later, okay? Hey, how you doing? Fine. How about yourself? Yeah, well, I'm a little dinged up, but I'm okay. What the hell happened in there? Well, the Hazen family came by to testify. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Kagan dropped out of law school three years ago. Since then, certified records show that he's been moving from one campus to another using the alias Martin Merman. How did he manage this? Well, Mr. Kagan has sophisticated computer skills that enable him to create information and insert it into existing databases, like past histories or complete student transcripts and so on. Locally, he was enrolled as Martin Merman. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Lomax, can you identify the person you saw the night of the murder? He's right there. For the record, identifying the defendant, Martin Kagan, Your Honor. The record will so reflect. Nothing further. No questions, Your Honor. Skin and the cheese grater found at the scene is a perfect DNA match. The partial prints lifted from the refrigerator, the bathroom faucets, and the victim's brother's car are all from one and the same person, as well as the full handprint we found on the murder weapon. All, Mr. Kagan. Could you state your name, your educational background, and how you're employed, for the record? Dr. Alice Barnes, Westgate Penitentiary, Chief Psychologist for the Department of Corrections, Yale Department of Psychology, Bachelor of Science, University of California at Berkeley, Department of Psychology, Doctorate. Did you, at the request of the state, examine the defendant? I did. Dr. Barnes, is Martin Kagan responsible for the murder of Jenny Lomax? No. The murderer of Jenny Lomax is Martin Merman, the entity that coexists within Martin Kagan. No further questions, Your Honor. Now, Dr. Barnes, I don't mean to embarrass you, but isn't it true that you once were the complaining witness in a child abuse case? Objection, Your Honor. There is absolutely nothing in this record that would allow this line of questioning. Sustained. Thank you. You are claiming that Martin Kagan is a multiple personality case. Is uh, that correct? I have identified Martin Merman thus far. Uh, additional sessions may uncover other personalities. Well, isn't it true that classically multiple personality cases have histories of child abuse? Yes, it is. You were abused as a child yourself. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. Again, irrelevant. What does this have to do with the case? Prosecution is clearly trying to discredit the witness. Ghost to bias. I'll allow it. Were you abused as a child? Yes. Well, isn't it true then that you feel empathy for the defendant? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> the witness is specifically trained professionally to have empathy for her patients. Overruled. No more than any of my other patients. Is Martin Kagan legally insane? Calls for legal conclusion, Your Honor. Withdrawn. Does Martin Kagan know the difference between right and wrong? Yes. Yes, he does. Can you give me the legal definition of insanity in this state? In layman's terms, the inability to distinguish between right and wrong, or the inability to conform to the requirements of the law. Martin Kagan, you've been found guilty of murder in the first degree. Do you have any remarks or statements you'd like to make for the record? Uh, yes, I would, Your Honor. I would like to thank you on conducting a fair and impartial trial. 
I also think the jury did what they believe was right. However, I stand here before you as a responsible member of society. A respectable person. And I truly hope that I will be viewed by you as the afflicted person that I am. That I will be given medical treatment. That I can be helped and studied so that we can better understand this terrible aberration. It is Martin Merman who has committed this crime. I ask that you help him through me, Your Honor. Thank you. Your statement has been noted. Martin Kagan, you'll be remanded to the state penitentiary where on March 3rd of the next year, a force of electricity sufficient to cause your death be coursed through your body until you're dead. May God have mercy on your soul. Well, may God have mercy on all your souls. You should have let me kill that bastard, Dan. Scotch him. Six months I've been at Westgate, you've been something of a stranger. But in the last week or so, you've been one of my better customers. With an execution coming up, I always take the time for prayer, Padre. Days before the switch is pulled. That's a very Christian notion. More than many a man in your position would be hardened that, that you would take the time to say a prayer for one of these poor, condemned souls. Fuck them. I'd say a prayer for the goddamn victims. Pardon me, Farrell. Joe Hines, New York Times, bestseller list. Got himself into a little legal trouble, though. Families of the bank customers he cut down in that heist. You know, the one society made him pull 
They're suing him for a piece of his royalty action. You're a creep, Jackson. Smells well safe. In case you want to look it up. Move. Now, if you boys need any spiritual guidance, text me as a man. He's been born again. Unfortunately, the people he killed in that convenience store are still dead. Hmm. Let's shoot. Move, Brother Jackson. This is Bobby Lee Hazen. He's in for it. Oh, hell, why bother? He's gonna be dead soon. I wouldn't suggest investing much in forging a relationship here. Move. Now, Tomas. It's an injustice he's even in here. Fucking hell. He didn't kill anybody but other gangbangers. Oh, yeah, and if he asks you to bend over and pick something up for him, keep your back to the wall or you might get something stuck in you. And I don't mean to shield. Move. I love you too, Jackson. Daddy. I didn't give you permission to speak. Captain Jackson, did I give this man permission to speak? I don't recall that you did, sir. Well, what's a family without discipline? <laughs> you got a cow man, son? No, sir. But they say you killed your wife. They were wrong, sir. Well, I'm not in the judgment business. I'm in the punishment game. You want to find your way into that cell? Or you want some assistance? No, sir. Well, here we are. Christmas is coming. There's too many of you boys to buy you each something special. But this Christmas Eve, I got one special gift for all of you to share. Ain't that right, Bobby Lee? That bartender you shot, his little five-year-old girl, oh, she ain't gonna have much of Christmas this year without her daddy. But you are, Bobby Lee. You get the big gift. You get to light up like a Christmas tree. Your own damn self. can't stay at home tonight. Command. How can anyone run a city with all this paperwork? John, the ordinance says you can't use that many automatic rounds for the tactical. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. I know, I know. So I tried to call you last night, but you weren't home. Yeah, well, I'm not staying at home too much anymore. It looks like a crime scene there. Everywhere I look is physical evidence. I'm not up for it. I know how you feel. Ever since then, I haven't had a good... Hi. Hey, Dan. Hey. 
Anyone for lunch? No, I've, I've got a lot of work to do. Thanks. Well, I'm up for it. Let's go. See ya. How do you feel about uh, lunch in my office? There's something I need to show you. Serious? Afraid so. Okay. Next week, while his death row cellmates are being relocated to Fairview Security Center, convicted murderer Martin Kagan will receive a rare opportunity for a chance at a better life. Mr. Kagan will be transferred to the Subtle House, a prototype rehabilitation environment at the State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. I'm at Westgate Penitentiary with Chief Psychologist Dr. Alice Barnes, who was instrumental in his resentencing. Thank you for being here. Dr. Barnes, what makes Martin Kagan an appropriate candidate for this program? I believe he will thrive in a hospital environment. Martin Kagan will have the opportunity to interact with everyday citizens in order to de-emphasize the unhealthy responses of his secondary or Martin Merman persona. In time, when he has shown rational and responsible behavior, we hope to include him in an outpatient program. And in a profound gesture of awareness and concern, Mr. Kagan has volunteered to speak with high school and college students to promote better understanding of the prison reform process. Oh, I God. wanted you to see it before it aired. John, I'd like to tell you there's nothing to worry about, but the governor is going to support her recommendation. I'm sorry. Gentlemen and ladies, as our time at this historic facility draws to a close, I want to thank you all for coming. This is a special evening, end of an era, as we celebrate the 125th execution here at Westgate. I took the liberty of providing a few uh, provisions and libations. Just doesn't seem right, you folks away from your families this evening. So, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you diet. <laughs> I'm afraid communications can get a tad slow around Westgate, son. But the parole board met last week. Yes, sir. Well, good news. You're going to be seeing your family real soon. I bet you're anxious to see your daddy again. Surely I am. Oh, Lord, I ain't never been much for religion. But after this, looks like I gotta take Christmas real serious. Well, since I kind of figured you might get all religious on me, I ordered you up a sky pilot. What do I need him for? If the governor will give me my stay. I don't remember saying anything about the governor giving you a stay. Captain Jackson, did I say anything like that? No, oh, sir. No, what I said was, you're going to be seeing your daddy soon. You see, him and your brothers and sister got themselves killed. Seems they dropped by the parole board and made an awful ruckus. They met their maker, son. Now it's your turn. Come along quiet. Take your medicine like a man, son. Make your daddy proud.
That is one mean son of a bitch. Umanzi? Nah. He's just an interesting relic of a more archaic time. Just like this very structure, Bill. I tell you, when I go, it's gonna be with a lot more dignity. You're no kidding. Well, not that it's ever gonna happen. I tell you, one day I'm gonna convince some court with my legal expertise that I'm a very sick man. Maybe. You know, that's still gonna take like 20 or 30 years. Bill, you're being very negative. Maybe I could use some help. Oh, hey. Time for your wake-up call, Daddy-O. What did you just say? Night-night, Daddy-O. Is it time to wake up and smell the appeal system, don't you know? Project. I'll be able to get some of that stuff we talked about. Sleep and I'll, I'll come up, all right? Go ahead. I just can't get those pictures out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about it. There's nothing else to do. It's over. It's never going to be over for me. See, that's what you don't understand. I'm sorry, I have to go. Gordon Munsey, how do you respond to these criticisms of inappropriate behavior? Do you normally serve a buffet before an execution? Having a little common courtesy for invited guests is only civilized. Now, if you good folks will just excuse me. You ought to burn in hell for what he put Bobby Lee through. You know that, man. That's very crucial attitude now, isn't it? You think Muzzy is going to get canned for this? Oh, bet on it. I guess it's going to be the new warden. No, not the little lady. Uh, herself. And it puts a whole new twist on the old phrase. <laughs> what <laughs> phrase is that, man? Fuck the warden. <laughs> Gordon Muncy. Gordon Barnes. Back to you, Warden. Not after your job. Well, don't turn your back on him. I believe in treating the prisoners like men. I mean the politicians. If you want to keep this job, you can't be soft. 
for it, and I know this is difficult for you. You know, I never understand how a strong man like your daddy could take his own life. Till now. You lost control of this prison because you were doing what you thought was right. My father was going to be sent to prison. He molested a little girl. Sweet Jesus. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. This is only maximum security cell block transfer tomorrow. And of course, your death row inmates will be the last out. Thank you for the advice. Yeah. Billy, you get any thought to my offer? What offer? To help you with your case. I mean, you're innocent, aren't you? Look at what Himes got out of that scam. He's on the bestseller list. I don't know, sir. Case of mistaken identity. Right eyewitness. Yeah, that's the funny thing about eyewitnesses. They all look the same to me. sick about you. Shit, I was afraid next couple days I'd see your face in the back of a milk cart. Hey, Frank, usual. So what are you gonna do New Year's Eve, huh? You gonna spend it with Liz? Yeah. Look, John. I wanted to see Kagan burn just as much as you did. See, but that's not our decision to make. Besides, Barnes has got some new evidence that most definitely links Kagan to three other murders. So as far as I'm concerned, that guy's never gonna see the light of day. Keep finding bodies. It's just gonna make it easier to convince people he's nuts. And one day, he's gonna walk. With respect, never got out. But that's exactly the point. Every year at the parole board hearing, those families had to relive their nightmare. Just to keep that son of a bitch in, I can't do that. I won't do that. Taking out guys like Kagan, that's... That's what I'm trained to do. Yeah, but this guy's in prison. Prisons are made to keep people in. Not to keep you out. What in the world are you talking about? Soon they'll just be death row inmates and a few guards. I'm gonna walk right in. I'm taking you home. Hey Frank! Hey Frank, let me get the check here. I'm staying. Fine. 
Come on. I got the key. Relax. I got the key. Relax. 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 I thought you left the business. I'm back. Night, Daddy. 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 Daddy.
Thanks for the offer, but no thanks. Let's get back to work. Right. Radio frequency jamming device. Jams any communication by air within a hundred meter radius. Latest government issue dry suit. Infrared night vision single eye scope. And I packed you a few other essentials in this uh, inflatable waterproof weapons bag. And here is the piece de la resistance. Schematics for Westgate Prison. I had to field a few questions to get this. I know clearance was a little rough on this. I appreciate it. Hey, don't worry about that shit with me. Whatever you need, whenever you need it. Thanks. Hey, this personal business is tricky stuff. You stay pro. I will. And splatter that son of a bitch. most wardens I know. I had to work late. Figured I'd save time and get dressed here. Your Mr. Kagan just killed Bill Loomis. What happened? Well, that's not important. Now, what is, is Kagan is hysterical and he won't let the doctor in to dress his wounds until he can talk to you. Let's go. Hey, Liz. Hey, Dan. Just stopping by to wish you and John a happy new year. Hope I'm not uh, barging in or anything. Uh, no, but John's not here. That's weird. He said he was going to spend the evening with you. No? Yeah. Well, is there something wrong? I'll call you later. through with this thing. Walk away from this jam. John, this is not an exercise. Think about it. Think about this. John, talk to me. Oh. This is good, John. This is real good. Stefan, go be a goddamn hero. What is suicide, you hear me? John, 
I miss Diddy just as much as you do. But this isn't going to bring him back. Jake, you wait here. I'm ready for you now. What are you doing? You can never be too prepared. Yes, sir. Don's having a hell of a time in there. Don't insult me. Put the gun down. Not a chance. Okay. Snap. Crackle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Could you kick it over to me? Which way is out? The place is empty. Try the front gate. Once a loser, always a loser. Lifer. Warren, I, yeah. I forgot to say thank you for everything. I hope you fry. Nasty, nasty. 
clock over here but you know I'm never gonna cheat on you hold on a second I gotta grab this other call control Crystal. Hello. Hello. to be a door to the roof up here. What, man? They're on to us.
got company. Kagan, where is he? Back up. Flesh and brother, you want to live? Back up! is, John, which one of us is better?
you son of a bitch. I'm all right. Can you walk all right? It's okay. okay. Just follow me. Oh my God, you're hurt. Let's get him to a hospital. Coming through. Now it's over. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Oh. You okay? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Well, nothing like a little excitement to bring in the new year. <laughs> ah! <sighs> Was it really worth it? Let's get you patched up. Come on. 